Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Boyd, and I'm with Rail Southwest. We're very excited to have you join us today for our webinar, Supporting Student Success Through Positive Approaches to School Discipline. Before we get started, I'd like to cover some housekeeping items. The first is that we will be recording today's webinar so we can post the video on the Rail Southwest website. So on your screen right now, you'll notice, uh, you'll have a notice on your screen about the recording, which I'll also read aloud, and you can also read it for yourself. But it says the American Institutes for Research, AIR, allows for the recording of audio, visuals, participants, and other information sent, verbalized, or utilized during business-related meetings. By joining a meeting, you automatically consent to such recordings. Any participant who prefers to participate via audio only should disable their video camera so only their audio will be captured. Video and or audio recordings of any session shall not be transmitted to an external third party without the permission of AIR. Next, as Dory mentioned, all attendees are in listen-only mode, and the sound that you should be hearing should be coming through your computer speakers. If you would like to join and listen in via phone, you can find the dial-in information by clicking audio options on the bottom left-hand corner of your Zoom control panel. Also, as a reminder, please make sure you put all your questions in the chat box. We also have automatic captions available. If you do not see the captions and you want them, you can unhide them by clicking the up symbol, which is next to the closed captioning live transcript button, and then you would select show subtitle. In addition, in order for everyone to see your chat messages and participate in the discussion, which we encourage so you can have active participation, please make sure the to area in your chat box is set to everyone and not just host and panelists, so everyone who's in the webinar room today can see your chat messages. Next, let me cover how does RHEL Southwest do this work. Regional Education Laboratory Southwest, also known as RHEL Southwest, is part of a network of 10 regional education laboratories funded by the U.S. Department of Education's Institute of Education Sciences, or IES. RHEL Southwest works with stakeholders across our region to meaningfully improve student outcomes. We conduct this work in partnership with education stakeholders in five states in our region. First, Arkansas, Louisiana, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. RHEL Southwest conducts its work primarily through collaborative research, partnerships with districts, some of which you'll hear about today, state education agencies, policymakers, and others in our region. These partnerships focus on high leverage education issues that our partners or others in the field have identified as priorities. For today's webinar, our goals are for you to learn about a recent Rail Southwest report, also about research on school discipline, as well as related approaches and practices for addressing school discipline with state and district examples, with the overarching goal of promoting educational equity. To get us started today, we'll hear about a recent report from Rail Southwest about college and career readiness indicators in the state of Arkansas. Then we'll hear about research on school discipline and how research and policies impact discipline in schools. We'll then transition to discussing what this work looks like in districts. Finally, we'll close out the webinar with a question and answer session with most of the speakers and panelists. So we welcome you throughout the webinar to put your questions in the chat box so we can make sure that we address them during that question and answer session. And as the webinar progresses, just make sure you're putting it there in the question and answer session and we'll be able to field them during that part of the, the webinar. Then at the end of the webinar, we'll share our stakeholder feedback survey. And I'll remind folks about that when we get closer to it. It will be sent to all webinar attendees afterward as well. This feedback is very important and it helps us improve for future events. So we really want your opinion. Now let me cover some of the people you'll be hearing from today. First, we'll hear from Dr. Candace Hester who led the Rail Southwest report in Arkansas and the related study related to that report. And Dr. Eric Flowers, who is the Chief Opportunity Officer at the Arkansas Department of Education. We'll then hear from Dr. David Osher, who is an Institute Fellow and a Vice President at American Institutes for Research, or AIR. 
Dr. Osher will then be followed by Dr. Robert Mayo, who is a senior technical assistant consultant to AIR and a national expert on school discipline. We're also very fortunate to have representatives from three states join us today for our panel discussion. Holly Ferguson is the Chief Policy and Strategy Officer for Highline Public Schools in Washington State. Dinah Taylor is a Behavior Intervention Specialist, excuse me, Behavior Intervention Specialist at Richland School District 2 in South Carolina. Last but not least, Ann Merton is the Director of the Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports, or PBIS, Resource Center at Arkansas State University. I'll now turn it over to Dr. Hester and Flowers. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. Arkansas's partnership with the Braille Adventures, I work by helping us to better understand our indicators of college and career readiness and building capacity in using our data systems and visual techniques to better understand the progress made by our students as we help them prepare for post-secondary success. In addition to this work, our partnership provides opportunities for us to think through ways to advance our agency strategic plan goals, as well as any other priorities that may arise. Thank you so much, Dr. Flowers. It is my honor to talk about the first of the bullets that Dr. Flowers was mentioning, the study that we performed to identify indicators that predict post-secondary readiness and success. The context for the study is Arkansas's ESSA plan, which identified a number of indicators that stakeholders should use to understand when students are ready to succeed in post-secondary. We aimed to estimate the accuracy and predictive strength of these indicators in two sets of grades, middle school and high school. And to do this, we followed two statewide longitudinal cohorts of students from grade six for eight years after they entered grade six. Our sample was first time grade six students in 2008-9 and 2009-10, followed through 2016-17 and 17-18 respectively. The data are from Arkansas Department of Education K-12 records, as well as their post-secondary enrollment and persistence records. And for students who enrolled in post-secondary out of state, we use the National Center for Education Statistics, uh, I'm sorry, that we, we used NCES data, um, as well as to understand the location of the schools that students were um, enrolled in. So the sample of first time grade six students um, in eight, nine and nine, 10 started with about 72,000 students, but about 9,000 of these students withdrew um, or were deceased um, and so therefore were not um, viable for the study, but we were left with about 63,000 students and we analyzed three different outcomes for these students, one of which was readiness, which was based on ACT scores and 37,930 students took the ACT, so were available for that part of the study. The outcomes examined were readiness, and that's a score of 19 or higher on the ACT score, which is a reflection of Arkansas's policy that students who score below a 19 require remediation. I think I got that right, Dr. Flowers. That's correct. And also enrollment and persistence in post-secondary. We were able to identify nine indicators using the data we had available that reflect the indicators that are in the Arkansas ESSA plan. Those include indicators of attendance or chronic absenteeism, proficiency in science, in ELA, and math, as well as grade point average in high school, community service learning credits in high school, advanced course taking in high school, and whether the students were ever suspended or expelled. I'm gonna show you four sets of outcomes they will cover middle school and high school, and then also readiness, which is that ACTM19 score as an outcome, 
And then what we call success, which is either enrolled or persisted in post-secondary. So for the middle school indicators that predicted major change in student post-secondary readiness, there were three what we call major indicators. And those were indicators that um, attained 10 percentage point change in a student's likelihood of the outcome in this course, scoring a 19 on the ACT, and also were statistically different from zero. So in this case, we have math, science, and ELA, so all academic indicators for the middle school indicators that predicted post-secondary readiness. On the next slide, we see there were six middle school indicators that predicted a major change in post-secondary success. And the first, the largest of these in magnitude was avoiding expulsion, followed by present more than 95% of days enrolled, ELA proficiency, present 90 to 95% of days enrolled, avoiding suspension, math proficiency. Science proficiency is not a um, major change because it doesn't quite reach that 10 percentage point change. Next. When we're looking at the high school indicators for readiness, that is again, scoring 19 or higher on the ACT, we have three indicators that predict a major change science proficiency, GPA of 2.8 or above, and math proficiency. And then when we get to the next slide, which shows us high school success, we have five. Advanced course enrollment is the largest, and the second largest, again, is avoiding expulsion, followed by GPA of 2.8 or above, present more than 95% of days, present 90 to 95% of days. So in summary, on the final slide, you can see that across the indicators we examined, the readiness outcomes were quite relevant. I'm sorry, the, the academic outcomes of math, science, and ELA were quite relevant for readiness across the models. But as we moved into enrollment and persistence, we see uh, um, a bigger focus on avoiding being expelled and suspended. I wondered if Dr. Flowers would share his thoughts on, on how these findings land. Absolutely. So what really stood out to us in the early draft results were that attendance, never being suspended and never being expelled in the middle school grades were strong predictors of post-secondary enrollment as well as persistence. So then our conversation shifted immediately to how do we support students, especially in their vulnerable middle school years, so they have all necessary supports, most importantly, in an environment that will ensure their, their success. And to be candid, we've seen discipline numbers that are very startling. And to know that some of these schools in our state experience high rates of in and out of school suspensions and expulsions. So we must identify and be strategic in addressing where we see examples of potentially ineffective and inequitable student discipline policies. So from that, we thought about how can we utilize this data as we look at student discipline trends over time, as well as any disproportionalities in student discipline across our state. So also if there is a correlation between student absenteeism and discipline and our racial data. And so moving forward in relation to our next steps, consistent with development of a plan, to share these findings with um, stakeholders, as well as promoting middle and high school policies and practices that will increase student attendance and alternatives to these exclusionary discipline practices. And then lastly, to help us understand how we can support districts and schools as they work to better mentor and monitor students and address these student needs and progress as it relates to these issues. Thank you, Dr. Flowers, that was really helpful and I really appreciate your partnership. Absolutely, same here. Thank you, Dr. Flowers, and thank you, Dr. Hester. If folks have any questions about the study or the related findings in the report that came from the study, please be sure to drop them in the chat box. Or even if you have reflections based on what they shared during the last portion of the webinar, uh, especially if there's certain findings that were compelling to you or you found interesting, just go ahead and just and um, you can actively participate through conversation in the chat box 